So we're gonna we're gonna quickly talk about the New York Football Giants. We're gonna recap the 30 to 12 loss to the San Francisco 49ers in week three in Santa Clara, California, on Thursday Night Football on uh, Prime Video. Uh, you know, I mean, expectations were not high, right? We're just like, hey, let's just hang in there. Let's just give it all our got. Let's do it for the Gipper. Saquon Barkley's hurt. Andrew Thomas is out. Ben Bredesen is out. Um, you know, the, the offensive line is decimated. And we had Josh Azudu, a guard starting a tackle yet again. Marcus McKeithen at guard. Glowinski benched. Shane Lemieux at left, ta- left guard, who hasn't, who started a bunch of games in 2020. Remember that year? <laughs> and um, we actually hung around for i guess i i in my head i was like i think we're gonna hang around for a half and then we're gonna get blown out like maybe it'll be touch and go in the third quarter but in the fourth quarter they're gonna pull away and it kind of played out kind of pl- rolled out that way it played out that way um you know at one point in this game we were down five in the third quarter 17 12 and i thought uh, you know, Al Mike is on is on the broadcast. Do you believe in miracles, dude? Because <sighs> you know, any given Sunday and all that crap. I mean, you you saw it this past week. I had a Mar- uh, Ravens Jaguars money line parlay. <laughs> Lost that zero for two. Ravens losing to the Colts at home, and then the Jaguars losing to the freaking Texans by twenty. Sure, why not? And then the Cardinals beating the Cowboys. The same Cardinals team that everyone and their mother has agreed in writing will tank and is in rebuild mode. Yet they have now played three of the hardest fought games and could actually be 3-0 right now. <laughs> like the ball bounces a different way in Washington. Same thing for the Giants game last week. Like they could be 3-0. Um, of course, you know, the Cowboys are missing... Uh, Trayvon Diggs, star, quote-unquote, cornerback. And so maybe that affected their ability to, to cover the pass, but it was really the run that did it in for, for Dallas. So, um, yeah, why not us was the mentality. Like, 17-12, we, had, uh, we finally had something go our way. We, we pinned them down. Scottish Hammer pins them down in deep. We were able to get some stops, get a punt return that is close to their territory. You know, and put together uh, a nice little drive to and punch it in with a run. And it's like, oh, holy shit, here we go. Um, but I, uh, I ended up taking because it was a night game, and I needed my beauty sleep, so I popped an edible, which was probably a, bad, a big mistake. Because I, 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 there was a period where I was like, are we playing good or no? Because we're in this game, but it doesn't feel like we're playing good at all. feels like there's a bunch of three and outs. feels like there's a bunch of uh, situations where a defense should probably get off the field and can't. But the score is 17-12. What's happening? Um, but, it, it, you know, a lot of the plays, it was just like, it was just like multi, one or more of our offensive linemen was just getting destroyed like blown up, like flying, like they, like a a grenade had gone off and they're just flying limbs everywhere. That's how it looked on pretty much every offensive snap for the giants at one point. Um, we were, yeah, we were crushed in pretty much all the major statistical categories, you know, allowed, uh, um, 441 total yards to 150, 141 rushing yards to 29, 300 passing yards to 121, 26 first downs to our 10. We had 20 minutes of time of possession. I mean, you know, we've lost 14 of our last 15 night games. So you had to figure. Now, that being said, I'm in a suicide pool, which I don't think, I don't even, I guess elimination pool is the more appropriate term i'm in this <laughs> elimination pool and uh i could have a lot of people picked the 49ers and i could have picked the 49ers and i didn't because i thought eh, something weird could happen here it's a short week they didn't have time to prepare we didn't have time to prepare maybe we toss something unconventional at them they don't know how to respond we catch them off kilter you know whatever so I did not pick the 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 49ers in my elimination pool. I ended up picking the Cowboys and the Chiefs because it was a double down week. And uh 
course, the Cowboys lose. Screw you, Dallas. Um, so still have not scored a first half touchdown. Kind of bonkers. Uh, 150 total yards is our lowest total in 10 years when we put up 150 yards in a 38 loss to the Carolina Panthers in 2013. Again, I remember after the blowout loss, I made comparisons to that 2013 season, how it was completely shocking. And uh, one of the one of the worst, I mean, that first eight, nine game span was one of the wor- my worst times as a Giants fan. And I know like Lions and Browns and all kinds of other fans are like, oh, boo-hoo. Let me play this violin real quick. He's so tiny. Um, our 29 rushing yards is the lowest figure since we ran for 29 yards in the 2020 season against Pittsburgh in the opener September 14th when literally uh, Saquon just <sighs> could not find any daylight whatsoever. And yet we almost we competed in that game and we almost won. That was the game where DJ puts together that long ass drive, so many plays, so many big conversions and big plays, and then throws a pick. Ugh. Our 121 passing yards were were not our lowest total this season. We had 63 net passing to Dallas. Duh. Um, we finished the game with no more than 10 first downs. Last time that happened was in the 2021 season finale. Um, in a loss to Washington, and if you don't remember that game, how could you not remember? That's when Joe Judge lined up for a QB sneak on third, and, on second and long, and then third and long in uh, inside our own ten. That was the nail in the coffin for Joe Judge. I was like, I think Mara saw that and was like, all right, yeah, we got to fire him. The twenty minutes of uh, time possession is the lowest figure since our last game against San Francisco in in twenty twenty when we had the ball for uh, 20 minutes and 16 seconds. So the 2020 season also didn't get it off to the greatest of starts. That was a, that was a big time. I think that that game against the 49ers was like, Oh, okay. So this, this is the kind of team we are this year. (laughs) Got it. You know, and that's hard to shake. You know, you look at the 22 season, we were able to run the ball pretty effectively. And based off the fact that we could run the ball successfully be productive in the run game and then open up play action and the passing game. And you know, that's how we win games. We have not done that this year at all, at all. So that's kind of should give you a clue as to what your expectations should probably be for the rest of the season. Jones was two of seven on passes that traveled more than 10 yards in the air. And his completions traveled an average of 3.7 yards in the, in the air. Yeah, I mean, um, we only attempted five play action passes. Jones was five for five for 30 yards. <laughs> so it 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 is a little befuddling, if I may say, that we just abandoned the run. And we did it against Dallas when we were down big. And we did it against San Francisco. Why are we abandoning the run? Continue to run. Mostly because, yes, Barkley's out, but you still have a pretty decent back in Matt Breida. Daniel Jones is a running back, can be a running back, utilize him. And I think Fred Warner, the Niners linebacker, said as much. Like I, We were planning on them doing way more design scheme runs for, for Daniel Jones, and it just didn't happen. So knowing that, like, you had the figure that the Niners were going to know that Jones is a, a, a dual threat and that we scheme and design runs for him, why not play off of that fake... <sighs> This is a dumb example. Fake an option. You know, we had a play like that in high school. And yes, I'm using a reference to my high school football team <laughs> where, you know, you fake the option and you, uh, the handoff to the fullback, you take maybe a step or two down the line and then you back it up, toss it. Something to, to that effect to just get the Niners to play a little more honest. But no. Nope. So. It wasn't Daniel Jones' day, that's for sure. And I think it's at the point now where, um, you know, last year he was getting the kind of protection, uh, good protection, that so that when he did get pressured, he didn't uh, get all discombobulated or frazzled, and he would actually throw well under pressure because it wasn't, I mean, I guess it's not completely true. He was one of the most pressured quarterbacks in the NFL last year. (laughs) 
<laughs> but it seems like in comparison to this year, like it was a walk in the park, like a cakewalk. It seems like he was behind like a, a fortress. You know, he was in, in, the, in the castle, uh, well protected, moat and everything. That wasn't the case. He was actually one of the most pressured quarterbacks in the NFL last year. But it's even it's like two to three times worse this year. So that's like that's why the, I, I feel like that comparison is not that statement that I made is not that far off. You know, he did, you know, it's just uh, he's I guess zero time to throw the ball. And and so then when he does get time to throw the ball, he thinks he doesn't have time. And so he'll he he won't look downfield or her scramble or he'll throw it away or, you know, he won't make an accurate throw. He won't plant his foot and make an accurate throw. And that happened a couple of times in that San Francisco game. You know, he missed a wide open Darren Waller. That would have been a first down extended drive. Um, he missed Waller a couple times. Uh, missed Slayton. He missed a wide open Jalen Hyatt. So it's like it just was not a great game for him. And I and I honestly think it's because he is it's like he's fully expecting to have zero time to throw the ball. And so he thinks he has to make the quickest decision or immediately immediately think that he has to escape essentially that's what's happening and i think that's what's you know so even on a clean when he has a clean pocket he doesn't think he has a clean pocket and so he doesn't like survey the field plant his foot and throw and so that's why he's inaccurate and he's off uh and it sucks watching the film and i i guess you can't really see this in the heat of the moment in the heat of the uh warfare but damn he had jalen hyatt so open <laughs> It's like, why, why not, uh, you know, you're not, you, you think you're going to nickel and dime this defense and win. You're not, you got to take some shots and some chances. And, and like, it would just would have been nice to take one or two chances with Hyatt in that game. Cause that's what, that's ultimately what broke open the game last season, uh, last week against the Cardinals, just a deep shot, 50 plus yards to Hyatt. And it swung the momentum. Uh, you know, Jones ran for five yards on two carries. It's the lowest rushing yardage, uh, since he had four yards against the Rams in October, 2021 and his fewest carries since he had one at Baltimore, uh, you know, right after Christmas, 2020, what a Christmas that was. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever told that story. I don't know if I ever will tell that story. I probably have. Um, there are times where the giants only had 10 players on the field. It's week three. What the fuck is going on? And I understand there's a lot of uh, it's t it's tumultuous right now. There's a lot of personnel changing up. So uh, you know, I guess you should be a lot more worried if you had the same personnel at least on the offensive side of the ball, and you're still having ten people on the field. Ugh. But the fact that that's still happening is uh, is just uh, unacceptable. And it, this is where the debate has gone now, where it's like fans are arguing with. Uh, you know, themselves about, is it the talent or is it the coaching? And I got to say, it's probably a little bit of both, but if it's more on more, more on one thing than the other, I'm going to lean towards not talent per se, but the giants team, majority of that roster, not given a single solitary flying fuck. I don't think this, I don't think a lot of these guys care. It, and if they do, they're not showing it on the field. They're not playing like it. Um, it, I mean, sleepwalking, like, you know, I think someone, maybe Pat Leonard asked about the slow starts today to Brian Dable, asked him, like, what's a, the slow starts? Like, how do you, what are you doing to address that? And he's like, yeah, yeah, we got to come out quicker. And it's just like this standard Pat answer that he always gives. It's like, no, for real, dog, what are you going to do? <laughs> Like you're going to give, I know, I know it's, he said it's a week by week league. Okay. You don't want to get too high. I don't want to get low. Okay. At the same time, it's one thing, like the other thing that people are saying is, so the, the, the coaches are dialing up schemes. The players are not executing it. So there's sometimes where the schemes are like, really, why are we doing that? Why, why, why are we not running with Daniel Jones? Why are we not taking a deep shot, et cetera, et cetera. But then you know, third and 13, third and 15, you know, we'll get into the defensive side of things, but the players is not executing. And I don't think that the players care. I really don't. 
And the other argument is, that, well, we expected the Giants to be one and two. I think a lot of people had the Giants at one and two after three weeks. And it's like, yes, but we also expected us to put up a fight against Dallas and make it close, make it competitive, and uh, have it be, you know, there are no such thing as moral victories, but like have it be kind of a motivational loss in a lot of ways. And we expected to close, you know, close the gap is the, the phrase of the week. Close the gap, close the gap. Close the gap with the Niners. Like, no, we're not expecting to beat them, but we thought we would uh, at least show that we belong in the same league as them. <laughs> and, and and then getting, like, having the, the, the biggest comeback in 70 plus years to beat a team that's widely considered to be like basement dwellers. I know it's the same record, one and two, <laughs> but you got to see the difference there. One is inspirational and hopeful. The other is like, no, I think this is the team. Like, unless someone, unless multiple players decide to to pick it up, pick up the slack, and give a shit, this is the team you got, and this is the this is the kind of play you can expect. Shane Lemieux is awful. He allowed five pressures in a sack. I've never seen an offensive lineman get beat quicker, faster, harder, stronger than he did. Like, not even close to even slowing down the defensive lineman he's going against. I mean, literally blowing right through him. And then there's Paris Campbell, who ranks third on the team of 16 targets, but uh, has 11 catches for 47 yards. That's like less than five yards a catch. And uh, 1.4 yards after the catch. So, um, And maybe that's because he's new and Daniel Jones is still building a rapport for him. But again, I say to you, what the fuck was training camp for? What was training camp? Why even have training camp? <sighs> Uh, anyway, on the defensive side of the ball, we blitzed, uh, we sent extra rushers on Brock Purdy on 33 of 39 dropbacks. 84.6% blitz rate is the highest ever recorded by next gen stats. And I do not disagree with that at all. I am not blaming that on us losing this game. I think that probably kept us in the game longer than we would have hoped for. So I am completely fine with with sending the house on 85% of the the, the the passes um what's sad though is that only two sacks and no takeaways mm, mm, mm. 49ers converted seven of 10 third downs in the first half it was like anytime they get a third down there was a point where it's just like well this is all right um yeah we're just never gonna we're just never gonna stop them on third down they gained 215 of the 310 passing yards after the catch. So Paris Campbell, take out your notebook, maybe jot down some notes on how to do that because it was, uh, it was, I mean, Debo Samuel, George Kittle, and Christian McCaffrey, the holy trifecta. I don't know how you stop that. And uh, I know Eagles fans are going to leave all kinds of shitty comments on this video, on this pod. Uh, the Eagles would have lost the Niners if Brock Purdy was healthy in the NFC Championship. It's that simple. The Eagles would have lost. The Niners would have won, for sure. I mean, the, 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 the Niners were playing without a quarterback for the majority of that game. Um, so I, I think they are my favorite to go to the Super Bowl out of the NFC, barring anything crazy happening. Um, our red zone defense was good, I guess. Niners only scored touchdowns on two of their, uh, five drives inside the 20. So that was good, I guess. Um, but there, there, there were at least two or three of those scores, 49 scores that probably shouldn't have happened. Deontay Banks dropping an interception, Odori Jackson dropping an interception, failure to capitalize on another tip ball that the Niners actually caught and took for a first down. So that kind of shit, uh, you don't win games like that. When you have the opportunity to take the ball away, you got to take the ball away. Um, I'm pretty sure we have zero takeaways on the season. Yeah, we have not recorded a takeaway for the third consecutive game. <sighs> I guess one of the bright spots, Micah McFadden had a team high 10 tackles, four tackles for loss, and an impressive pass breakup on a wheel route to Christian McCaffrey at the goal line. There was one play where he met Christian McCaffrey in the hole, didn't get juked, and and wrapped him up and took him down. So uh, we were calling for his head and saying he should be benched 
you know, after the Arizona game, and it looks like maybe he solidified his position there at inside linebacker with that game. Uh, 16 missed tackles. Dear God. And, I mean, not even like, and that's what's, I guess, most concerning, alarming, and depressing about the season so far is that our tackling is just shitty, just atrocious. I mean, Trey Hawkins, I've never seen a grown NFL professional quarterback do what he did. <laughs> I forget who was running the ball. It might have been Elijah Mitchell. It was not McCaffrey. He's running towards the outside. Um, Trey Hawkins is playing outside contain, and he just kind of runs up and just kind of – it's almost like he was doing a slip and slide. Like, wee! Like, I'm going to slide into your feet, and you're going to fall over. <laughs> um, one of the worst tackling performances I've ever seen. Uh, no one could bring down Kittle. No one could bring down Samuel. We could barely bring down McCaffrey. Uh, Xavier McKinney is playing soft. It's just like it's a bunch of guys playing soft, which is exactly what I said after the we lost to the Eagles in the divisional round. Was like we're not playing fast and hard and loose. We're playing soft, and it ki- continues to kill us. You know there was a uh, and this could be an issue of perspective. Um, so McFadden was the first def- Giants defender with four tackles for a loss in a game since Justin Tuck had four against Washington in 2013. Um, his tackle for loss total is the highest by any NFL player this season. So that's you know, something to hang your hat on. Good on you, Mike, Micah McFadden. Um, but the 441 yards are the most allowed, allowed by the Giants since Jacksonville gained 452 in a Giants win on October 23rd, 2022. Again, that was a game that they could have very easily lost at the end. Um, and, you know, the, the defense, I think, is most upsetting because the offense is the offense. Guys getting hurt right from the jump. I mean, Andrew Thomas was not himself after that first drive. Uh, losing guys to injury on the offensive line. Losing Barkley to injury. Um you know, it's just a, a goddamn mess with the offense. You at least thought the defense would step it up and be something to, to respectful, to to be respected, and, and they're just not. This is a instance where uh, I, it's one person's point of view, but I think it's important to note. DJ Davidson looked like he had a pretty serious elbow injury. It was happened because of a cheap shot delivered by one of the 49ers linemen, I think. Um. Kayvon, both Kay, the, this reporter says that Kayvon Thibodeau and Bobby Okereke were standing nearby and appeared to witness the cheap shot on DJ Davidson, but never reacted. Neither player reacted. So he said maybe they didn't recognize what had happened in real time, but the Giants have not shown much fire defending their teammates this season. Another example was Daniel Jones took a late hit from J. Ron Curse in the Dallas game on a slide on the second play of the season opener. Um, and not one offensive lineman got in the safety's face. And this reporter, I think it's Dan Duggan, said that the Giants, and I know people have issues with Dan Duggan, I get it, but it's like something, you, it's it's noticeable. Anyway, he finished out the article by saying the Giants have plenty of problems to address, but demonstrating more fight should be fixed immediately, and I can't agree more. It's just, it's sad. You know, like even Kayvon's sack it's his first sack of the season. It was the team's first sack of the season, week three. Oh, my God. Um, the only reason he got, it was a coverage sack. Like, Brock Purdy was back there. He's looking, he's looking, he's looking, he's looking. It's not like Kayvon got, got around the corner, strip sack, you know, uh, just a, a phenomenal physical feat. It, literally, Brock Purdy just couldn't find an open guy. And so Kayvon, who, like, was nowhere near Brock Purdy for the majority of that play, finally, you know, sees the offensive lineman forgot about him and then goes and and sacks Brock Purdy. And then he has a celebration and that celebration was so goddamn lame. And it's just like, A, I know this is old boomer white guy take. Why are you celebrating? What, what did you do on that play other than what like any player in the league could have done or should have done any other player in the league? You're celebrating that? Cool. Uh, and it was also just a lame celebration. It was just like, I don't even know what you're, I don't know what that is. You're a robot. Okay, cool. Um, and so that's, you know, there, the, he's got his defenders, you know, I see it on Twitter. Like the, the giants defense is more than one man. Yes, it is. It's 11 guys. I get that. You need other people to step up. Leonard Williams, I guess, stepped up against the Niners. He had his best game thus far in the season. Dexter Lawrence is Dexter Lawrence. He's always playing well. Um, but the, you know, we, I praised the secondary. I said they probably are their strongest unit. But then 
They can't tackle <laughs> worth a damn, especially in the run game coming up and stopping the run. So, you know, they're, but he, there's, but with Kayvon, it's just like the knock on him has been this season that is he trying? <laughs> like, is, are you seeing maximum effort from Kayvon Thibodeau through three weeks? And the answer is a lot of people would say no. But they're like, why are you putting so much stress and and uh, focus on Kayvon? And the defense is more than one guy. It, the dude's a top 10 pick. There's just a different, and we said this before, there's a different expectation when you're a top 10 pick. You need to perform like a top 10 pick. You see what Micah Parsons is doing. You see what a lot of other top 10, 10 picks are doing. That's the expectation. You need to be on that level. You're in year two. Time to step it up. Just like we thought Evan Neal would step it up and he hasn't. It's just like, oof. if they don't turn it around, those two picks, that is, oof, that's going to eat away at this fan base for a long time. So that's a Niners game.